Uh, good morning. Um, a very different YouTube today. Um, how anybody can write a book, um, Christian Perspective on Coronavirus, get it edited, proofread, published, and then get to the shops and I buy it in three, four weeks, I don't know. OK, but that's what John C. Lennox has done. I'm a big fan of this author. Um, short little book, and I'm going to be using it quite a lot for the next, um, well, for a series of three YouTubes I'm going to do. Uh, they won't be consecutive. I'll do it over two weeks. Um, his title is Where is God in a Coronavirus World? I'm going to switch the order around a little bit. Today, I'm going to talk about how Christians um, should respond to this pandemic. Five ways we should respond. And then part two will be different viewpoints on coronavirus, not from a Christian perspective. And then the third one will be, how can it be coronavirus and suffering this world when we believe in a loving, all-powerful God? So a tricky one at the end. Um, but today, just looking at, really simple, how should Christians respond to this pandemic in no particular order? And the first one is, we need to pray. I was talking to someone the other day and we were trying to solve the problem. We were batting it backwards and forwards and not really getting that far. And towards the end of the conversation, the other person said to me, well, let's just pray about it. It's the most useful thing I can do. And I was thinking about that afterwards, how often with prayer, we think of it as being the last thing. It's our last resort or we'll try all the other options and then we'll pray. It shouldn't be like that. Prayer should be perhaps our first thing we do. We're called to pray. And there is so many things we can be praying for at the moment. I've just written an article on the BBC about the impact this is having on people's mental health issues and physical health. And we're going to see that long term, potentially. Well, what, you know, for us to pray about that now. You know, as Christians, we believe we can go right into God's throne room because of what Jesus did. We can go right in there and lay our requests, make our petitions um, uh, to God. So we've got that. We've got praying about our families for safety, praying about our neighbours and how we can be helping them, praying about our leaders who've got to make tricky decisions, praying about our frontline people who put their lives on the line, praying for scientists who are coming up with some sort of cure for this disease. There is a wealth of things which we can be praying for right now. And instead of thinking of that as a fairly useless thing, realising that is an incredibly powerful thing which we can do. Uh, you know, there are cases where we shouldn't obey the government, according to the Bible. When the, those in authority say something which is completely against Christian teaching, we shouldn't actually follow that. But the rules which are coming out at the moment, I cannot interpret in any other way apart from they're about loving our neighbour. That great commandment Jesus said, love God and love your neighbour. When we break the rules at the moment, perhaps with two metres of social exclusion, or we're leaving a house for non-urgent times or not for exercise, etc, etc. I cannot interpret that in any other way apart from we're not loving our neighbour and therefore breaking that great command commandment Jesus gave us. Also, that if we need to be taking medicine, etc., then we should take it. That is not a lack of faith, like I heard someone say the other day on YouTube. That is not a lack of faith. God can protect us and he can heal us. But he also expects us to be wise with the resources he's given us. And that includes medicine and the knowledge and wisdom of the medical staff. So that's number two. Third of all, and perhaps a bit more controversially, we need to maintain perspective. This is completely new to us, um, and I'm hoping a one in a lifetime event for us. But it's not new to other people in the world or historically. So, for example, the SARS outbreak in 2002, which was deadly for those who caught it. But historically, just listing them off, the plague of Justinian killed 25 million people. The Black Death killed up to 100 million people. The flu pandemic, which was only 100 years ago, 1918 to 1920, 
killed 50 million people. That's nearly the population of Britain. Uh, HIV and AIDS, 32 million people have died so far. I'm not downplaying this event. That's really important. But what I am saying is this is not unique to us. OK, or it's unique to us, but not unique if we take a historical perspective on it. Do you know, maybe this event will give us greater empathy. I don't know about you, but sometimes I watch the news and it's over there and I'm just kind of it's there and I switch it off. And maybe this will help us to remember that when we see stuff that we're not directly hit by, what that's like for those people. And perhaps encourage us to pray, going back to point one. C.S. Lewis writes, in the 1950s, he's talking about the, um, the worry of the Cold War, the worry that the world is going to annihilate itself with, with nuclear warheads. And he writes, um, it could break our bodies, but it need not dominate our minds. In other words, he was saying this nuclear warfare could potentially kill us, but it wasn't saying it had to dominate our minds. We could choose that. As Christians, we have a different perspective on things, which I'll talk about in point five. Number four, following on from point two a bit, love our neighbour. Are we keeping contact with friends and family and neighbours, but are we also keeping contact with marginalised people who we know who no one else might? Are we encouraging people? Are we supporting them? Are we reaching out to those who are really going through very tough times at the moment? Are we thinking about others above our own comfort? That is such a challenging question. Are we thinking about others' needs above our comfort? And are we avoiding selfish hysteria, which we saw when people were stockpiling toilet roll and stuff in supermarkets? which led, led to empty shelves and other people not being able to get their requirements. Are we loving our neighbour? Here's what Paul writes in Romans 8, verse 18, and the NLT. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory he will reveal to us later. And skipping on towards the end of the chapter. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's what Paul writes. This is what C.S. Lewis writes uh, regarding heaven. He says, we're very shy nowadays of even mentioning heaven. We are afraid of a jeer, uh, the criticism, someone making fun of you, about pie in the sky. In other words, it's just made up. But either there is pie in the sky or there's not. You know, one day Jesus will return. One day all things will be made new. And it's good for us to focus on the eternal. It's so important to finish, uh, to focus on that. This is what John C. Lennox says to write the end of his book. Peace in a pandemic, question mark. Only Jesus can give us that. The issue for all of us is this. Will we trust him to do so? <laughs>